problem number 18, uh, we're given the series 25 plus 32 plus 39 plus dot 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 102. We are asked to write the arithmetic series in sigma notation and find its sum. We will begin by first finding its sum and then writing the series in sigma notation. So as in previous problems, we are going to we need to first find out is how many terms there are in this part in this series. So we are going to start with the formula. The value of the nth term is equal to the value of the first term plus the number of terms minus 1 times the common difference. Well, our nth term is our last term, which is 102. So we are going to replace a sub n with 102. We know the value of our first term is 25. We don't know how many terms there are, so that's still n minus 1. And we know that the common difference is 7. This has an increase of 7 each time. So using distributive property, we will go 7 times n, which is 7n. And we will multiply negative 1 times 7, which is minus 7. We will now combine the like terms, 25 and negative 7. So now we have 102 is equal to 7n plus 18. Keep this in your back pocket. This is going to come in handy later on, this expression 7n plus 18. All right. So now let's go ahead and continue. So if we subtract 18, let's rewrite this again. 102 equals 7n plus 18. If I subtract 18 from both sides of the equation, now I get 84 is equal to 7n. And if I divide 84, by 7, I get 12. So dividing both sides of the equation by 7, n is equal to 12. So we're looking for 12 terms, the sum of 12 terms. All right, now let's go ahead and come up with what that sum is. So we're looking for the 12th partial sum Again, using the general formula, the, the nth partial sum is equal to the number of terms divided by 2 times the quantity, the value of the first term, plus the value of the nth term. In this case, n is 12. So we're looking for the 12th partial sum. So we go 12 over 2. The value of our first term is 25. The value of our nth term, or 12th term, is 102. So dividing 12 by 2, we get 6. Adding 25 and 102 together, we get 127. And then multiplying 6 times 127, our 12th our partial sum is going to be equal to 762. All right. Now, the second part of this, so that is the 12th partial sum. But we need to write this in arithmetic and sigma notation. Well, how many terms do we have? We found out down here that it's 12. So our sigma then is going to be from n equals 1 to 12. Our expression, now, <clears throat> in previous sigmas, we've always had some number multiplying the n. And I don't know if you recognize this or not, but that number it always seems to be the common difference and it is in this case as well we have an increase of seven each time so it's seven n and as a matter of fact if we were to look at this expression right here this is the expression that we are going to plug into this so it's seven n plus eighteen now just think about this for a minute. How, if we didn't know this, how would we generate what 
we would add to 7n. Well, one way would be to do it is to say, okay, if I let n be 1, and I multiply 7 times 1, I get 7. But the value of my first term is 25. So if I go 25 minus 7, gee, I'm left with 18. So that tells me that that's how much more I would have to add in order to get to the value of the first term. So we found how many terms there were. We found the 12 partial sum. And we use that information to write the, uh, the partial sum in sigma notation.